you sent me a uh, rambling voice note. <laughs> I do that. <laughs> <laughs> is it all I, love? Is it you want? And then you sent the demo, and I was just like, yes, this is sick. Hey, it's Josh. And I'm Rao. And you're watching Friends Like These. When did we first meet, Josh? I th- I think it's got to be Backline Studios. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. So yeah, yeah me and Chris are having a chat about this because I was like, it must be that one. Because that was 2008. That's scary. Yeah. yeah. No, no, dude, wait. Was before? Before? I was 15. So oh, my like God. 2006 okay. or something like that. Wow. It was like, my space was fucking Yeah, that. yeah. And this Guildford, right? Guildford, Guildford Backline yeah. Studios, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Good vibes. Bloody hell. I didn't realise it was that long ago. <laughs> First memories of each other, probably from a distance. Yes. Watching Sorry Not a Winner music video. House party. House party in the, yeah, Chris's parents went away for the weekend. No, you're joking. It's got a load of people over. You feel the it? only reason <laughs> they, they ended up knowing was because at one point, Rory's guitar made a chip in the ceiling. Or well, you would have got away with I it. I think we would have got away with it. That's unreal, that. Yeah. That's that's we should pull that out off and we, <laughs> in front of them as well just to really get going. Um, yeah, I feel like and then yeah, what were you saying before when we were not in these chairs about another memory that you had? Uh, <laughs> yeah, earlier we were having a great conversation yeah. about Warpsaw and uh, this uh, I don't know some festival in Eastern Europe that you know when you have like a really like almost like wholesome night mm. on tour and like. Just like everyone's in like a, you know, good spirits and isn't too sleep deprived and, you know, and it was just like a, yeah, it was a really nice night. But yeah, Warp Tour was, um, that was probably when we first got to know each other. Yeah. I, I mean, we've always, when we, the way we've always spoken about you guys is we see a lot of us in your band, like the way how close you all are, the way that you're like good lads and like you get a sense of not only individuals, but collectors on how they are around each other. Yeah, yeah. You know, when like, you hang out a band, you're like, you don't like each other that much. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? We move as a, as like a tribe and you meet a six and I feel like that's quite similar with you guys as well. Yeah. Did, did you know each other like before becoming a band? No. Did you, oh, okay. We, no, we literally met, at, um, I met Max in a mosh pit. Nice. So, this uh, about him and then met Matt, he was wearing a Drive to Records t-shirt and I said to him that we should start a band that sat, like I just saw him in a shopping centre and I was like, to wear a dry through records t-shirt was quite rogue and walking on Thames. So I was like, <laughs> mate, we should start a band. That's like, awesome. We, like, we need another guitarist. He's like, oh, my next door neighbor's a guitarist, still play. So we literally all met as like sort of 14, 15 year old kids and then just cool. did it. What about you guys? Did you meet at school? Uh, yeah, we, well, we were actually, me, Rob and Chris all went to the same primary school. Okay. And then Rob went to a different se- secondary school and that's where he met Rory. Sick. But like, I always sort of have an assumption that like, if you like start a band with strangers, there's like a good chance that it's going to go wrong. Like someone's mm. going to end up being a bit of a twat and like yeah. they're all going to, the tension will rise, but like, yeah. But when you've known each other since you're 14. It's, well, that's it. Because it's, it's, gonna, it's, it's all, um, what's the word? Love. It's all love. Like. <laughs> how did No Future come about? How do we put it together? You sent me a, uh, Rambling voice note. <laughs> I do that. <laughs> is it all I, I love? <laughs> is it you want? And then you sent the demo and I was just like, yes, this is sick. Like, it was one of them things, like, I immediately knew, like, what it needed or what I could, like, bring to the track. And it was yeah. just like, it was already, like, a banger. It was just like, okay, how can I make this better? So it was, yeah, I was, I was buzzing when you sent it over. I was uh, down... Um, in Chichester recording our forthcoming album and we were like way behind schedule yeah. like a bit stressy and so I was like oh shit like are we going to be able to do this like in time but then like stayed up one night and just like wrote it wrote the lyrics and added those little synthy things yeah. I was like yeah fuck, yeah fuck, this is fucking jokes I mean that's that was the thing that like that was my takeaway from it was I don't know what your experience has been like asking people to feature records and stuff in the past. Very, it, but it can be super varied. Yeah. And like 
there, I mean, there was meant to be something on this record that like was so difficult that in the end I was just like, I don't, I don't even want you to be on our album. Right. Like, yeah. All those people that like just gloss over it or like are like a strong yes and you never hear anything again or mm. straight up no or whatever. But that was the thing that I went back into the studio. I said to that, I was just like, you know what makes me feel good about this as a, a whole thing is that was your reaction like mate it's gonna be fucking jokes I'm gonna get on it got a lot going on but I'm gonna do it and I was like that made me feel like yeah it was the right thing to to ask you tell me about Truth Decay which was out yesterday out yesterday um eight to dwell surprise to many um (laughs) and yeah man it's just like we wanted to make uh I guess like a quintessential unit six sounding album. So we sort of looked back to go forward. We were like, if it feels contrived or cringy, let's not do it. Turns out we actually loved what a band used to sound like. So we just went backwards and just like refined it and tried to make it a little bit more sophisticated, but with the spirit of like just a straight up emo pop punk record, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and when it's quite hard to do, like, like, you know, go, are you like the kind of band or the kind of person that just like doesn't really look back? Are you like constantly thinking about what comes next? Yeah, and I think on Sucker Punch, we basically made a record which was all five people trying to flex their creative muscles. Okay. Like dance, country, believe it or not. Like loads of different things that everyone was like really trying to pull in. Yeah, man. So it kind of became like a really interesting record, but one which even when I listen to it now, it's like this is a bit confusing for people to digest. So the thought process for Truth to K was how do we, like, and also where do we sit at the table? Like, I know who the big metal band is or the big pop band is. From the, do you know what I mean? Like, I know where all these other bands are. I was like, that last record felt like we'd lost a little bit of who we were whilst right. trying to find who we were. If yeah, that makes yeah. sense. So I just went back to basics and did, went to Santorini and, just, and got away and listened to loads of, like, Taking Back Sunday and shit like that. I was like, let's rip that off. And that's what we did. <laughs> so we did for six weeks. Great. <laughs> wow. What can people expect from your new record, A Kiss for the Whole World? Well, um, it, it was uh, written after a period of like complete dryness like I didn't write for a year and a half throughout lockdown basically which is something I've never done and it was very weird and I feel like there are it it seemed as though like most people were like super productive in that whole period but there were like some people who just like just couldn't write and that was definitely me so this record then became like when I could finally write again which is when we started playing shows so there's definitely a real connection there between you think that's fed into the record yeah. yeah um yeah so the the record is like it was written with such excitement and like relief almost it's like mm. okay fuck okay, I've, st- I've still got this outlet I can still create turn like, the tap on yeah, yeah and it was um, so it's like a very it's like quite upbeat like full of energy um, it's still like you know very broad palette um, but one of the things we like started saying as I was like bringing some of the songs to the guys were like, okay, so this is going to be an album of bangers. <laughs> and I think that's kind of like what we've tried to keep it as. So there isn't like a lot of, there's no like six minute self-indulgent right. prog rock or anything yeah. like that. It's like, it's kind of short, sharp, sweet. Um, you know, our, our generations like things immediately, don't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, like totally. And chorus uh, before the verse. Yeah, yeah. Dessert, so, so before before the, the main, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Love that. Yeah, so it's, and it's, yeah. would you say where would you place it if if fans were trying to figure out what kind of era Shikari is more like ever present on the record? Is yeah, particular. Um, I I don't know, like, because I've I've already seen people with the two tracks we've released. I've already seen some people say like, "Oh, this is sick. You're going back to like your roots." And I've seen some people say, "Oh, I wish you'd go back to like your takes the sky sound or whatever you know." <laughs> so like. What people don't know, I don't know. There's no like, point in trying, isn't yeah. there? There's no point <laughs> to try and please people. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. It's um yeah, it's all over the shop, but it's probably a little bit more focused, so I don't know what that era would be. A new a new era. Yeah. We'll take that. <laughs>